This is an example of MRP, Materials Requirements Planning. What we have here is a product structure diagram showing that we're producing two types of chairs, chair A and chair B here at level zero. The lead time for chair A is one period, the lead time for period for chair B is also one period. On level one, we see that we need one pedestal assembly to go into the first chair, A, and we need the same pedestal assembly to go into chair B. We'll call this item C. Notice also that item C has a lead time of two periods. On sheet two, we've got inf information about the inventory levels of the three items. Uh, item A, we have zero on hand, we have zero scheduled receipts. Recall again that the lot size is one from the master production schedule. We see that we need 150 of chair A in period two, 150 of chair A in period seven, and there's no sa safety stock requirement. Chair B, likewise, has zero on hand, zero scheduled receipts. Uh, one for lot size, 120 in period five from the mass production schedule, 120 in eight, and no safety stock. Item C, the pedestal assembly, we currently have 47 on hand. We're scheduled to receive 230 units that have already been ordered in period one. Our lot size requirement is 230 units, meaning that every time we place an order, we must order at least 230, and our safety stock is 50. Okay, let's start with item A. Again, the lot size is one, lead time is one. Recall from our master production schedule, we have 150 units in period two is required and 150 units of chair A in period seven. Our inventory level starting out is zero, all the way across. Our net requirements are 150 and two, 150 and seven. So the orders must be uh, released one period prior to arrive as required in period two and in period seven, respectively. On sheet four, we've got item B, which looks very similar from the mass production schedule. Again, 120 is required in period five, 120 in period eight. A one week lead time again, since the order releases out in period four for 120 units and out in period seven for uh, 120 units. Now we'll see on the next sheet that the 120 units are the gross requirements for um, the item C, the pedestal assembly. So that 120 just slides in period four right there and in period seven right there for gross requirements on item C. We've got uh, 150 units which was uh, required for chair A in period one and 150 units required for chair A in period six. Once again, this is item C. This is the pedestal assembly. The safety stock recall is 50. The lot size requirement is at least 230 units. Lead time is two periods. Recall from sheet number two that we had 230 units scheduled receipt in period one. So that 230 units is set to arrive in period one. Our on-hand inventory starting out was 47 units. So we've got enough to supply 150 here. 230 plus the 47 is 277 minus the 150 is 127 is what we end up with. So there's zero net requirements. That 127 will roll over fine to period two, period three. In period four, we have the net requirement of 120 units and we have enough actually, 127 minus 120, we'd end up with an inventory level of seven, but recall we have a safety stock requirement of 50. Therefore, we have an actual net requirement of 43 units because of the safety stock requirement. So we must place an order of 230 units so it's set to be received in period four, and recall with that two period lead time, that order must be released in period number two, so it can arrive in period number four. Therefore, 230 units arrive, plus the 127 we have on hand, minus the 120 going out the door for chair B, leaves us with an ending inventory of 237 units. That 237 units carries over into period five. 
we have 150 going out the door in period 6. That's for chair A. So 237 minus the 150 going out the door ends up with an inventory level of 87. In period 7, we need 120 for chair B. So we're 33 units short. So the net requirements is actually the 33 that we're short plus the safety stock of 50 that we have to end up with. So our actual net requirement is 83 units. So we must place an order two periods prior of 230 units. That 230 units will arrive just in time in period 7. So 230 plus the 87 that we have on hand minus the 120 that we require for chair B gives us an ending inventory of 197 and that carries over into period 8. So you can see with MRP, Material Requirements Planning, it's not complicated math. It does get a little mess messy as you uh, go further down in, in levels. Um, if, if this uh, pedestal assembly had, had uh, other uh, products that go into this, you can see that it does get a bit messy. But it's not complicated math. We could program this into a computer and actually when you're using MRP, you'll probably be using an ERP package such as SAP to do this. You won't be doing this by hand like I'm, I'm doing in this example. But uh, you see how it works. It's all very logical and it flows from one, one product to 